Welcome back to Consign Pro Training, Module 3. I'm Brian Wilson, and I'll be taking you through some more functions of the Consign Pro program today. Uh, specifically, we'll take a look at security for the system as it relates to your employee sign on and sign off. We'll take a look at the different options available on the maintained store screen. And if we have time, we'll poke through the report screen as well. Uh, this training session should last about 10 minutes. Uh, the first screen that we're going to take a look at when it comes to security is going to be the employees window because that's where your <coughs> employees are set up with their first name, last name, address, password. Uh, when they sign in and sign out of the system, they're going to be identified by their first name and they're going to have to present a password. You will assign a name and password uh, for each employee in your system. We've got some optional information down below. And more, more importantly than that, over on the right hand side is where their permissions are set. Permissions get set for each employee in the system and they can be different and should be different for each employee that you have. The store owner, for example, in our profile assistant, if I click on owner, it will set all of these check boxes turned on. That means the, the owner of the store has access to a lot of different parts of the system. In fact, every part of the system. If I change that to something of a store manager, you'll notice that that employee with that designation cannot edit the store policies or edit your employee records. So you'll need to think about what job responsibilities each employee in your store has and then try to give that employee just enough responsibility or just enough permission to do their job effectively. In the lower right corner, we've got some arrows down here, which shows that this is one record of a total of one employee on the system. I'm going to click Add Employee, and I'm going to add a new employee to the system. My favorite fictional character, Mickey Mouse. <clears throat> Notice when I put in the password, it puts in stars for me. And this person is going to be, we're going to call them a clerk. They will have the ability to void sales, but not view my financial reports, not edit store policies, not delete consigners. They can delete or modify inventory, but if you'd like, we can change that by just removing the check. The profile assistant is meant to just give you a kind of a general uh, permissions level for that employee, but you can modify by either checking or unchecking these boxes. I'm going to save this record to the database and if I go back into employees I notice I now have two employees. Store owner, that's me, I'll change this to my name and then lastly Mickey Mouse. Notice our permissions are different as I scroll from one employee to the next. I could also on the screen delete an employee if somebody uh, no longer worked for you. Instead I'm going to jump back to the main menu on the main menu, we see a button that says sign on, sign off. And when I click that, I've got a drop down list of choices for employees that work in the store. When somebody logs in, we'll log on as Mr. Mickey Mouse. Notice that on the main menu, two buttons automatically disappeared. Maintain store and the employees button. Both of those employees disappeared because Mickey Mouse was set up as a clerk and they don't have the right to go into those screens in the system, to change things, look at things, etc. I'll log back on as myself and we'll see those buttons reappear. Well, we should have. They didn't, so that tells me that my employee profile is not set up correctly. Luckily, we have an override password, which we only provide to store owners, that will restore the main menu so that you can go back in and get the employee correct. Now, now I am set up really as the store owner with all of the functions that I need uh, to be checked. If you do need, if you do lock yourself out of that screen, simply call our support number and either Tom or Allison or one of our support people can help you get those buttons back on your main menu. It does happen sometimes. The sign on sign off screen uh, is only effective if you use it. Uh, we have it turned off in the system right now, but if I go to maintain store and then go to customize CP, up at the top I've got store settings as a tab. We've got a checkbox here that says show login screen at startup. 
That tells me every time I start the program, I want somebody to log in or log out. You'll notice we also have another box. Where is it? Require re-login after 10 minutes. What that will do is that'll protect your system so that if an employee walks away and is gone for 10 minutes, the system will automatically bring up this sign on sign off screen. It locks the system and it forces somebody to log back in to start using the system again. So that wraps up kind of the employees uh, screen, how you add a new employee, how to use the sign off sign on screen to protect the integrity of your system. And on the employee screen, you'll also see some permission levels that we have here. Those permission levels uh, get set up by you. I'm going to turn off my email so you don't have to see those pop-ups come up. Uh, let's take a look next into the maintain store screen. Under maintain store, this is where you set up your store information. Owner's name, address, or store address I should say, phone number, web address, what your state tax rate is, how you have things taxed, if everything in your store is taxable, and layaway percent. If somebody was to put something on layaway, if you allow layaway in your store, what down payment do you accept on that? You'll notice on, <clears throat> excuse me, on many of our screens, we also have a second tab at the top, or in some cases even a third. If you go into store terms, you'll notice more information about the store. In here, you can put in your receipt message, that's the message that goes on the bottom of your printed customer sales receipts. Contract message. Uh, you can enter the terms of your contract here, and then they will print out anytime you create a contract for a consigner. Layaway terms, and lastly, the received report message. A received report is a report you hand to a consigner after they've just done a consignment with you. Basically, it's a listing of items they just dropped off. This message you put in here will appear at the bottom of that receipt. Middle of the screen, very important. How long is your consignment period for the majority of your inventory? If all of your inventory doesn't have the same term, you can specify different terms for different types of inventory over on our Maintain Lists page. We will cover that in a different module. It's called Flexible Terms. You'll also put in your default store percentage. This is the amount the store gets. In our case, it's 50%. More and more stores are going to 40, I'm sorry, 60% to the store, 40% to the consigner. End all my prices with, uh, some stores like to end their prices with 98 or 99 cents. The system will do that automatically for you. Buyer's fees, uh, if you turn on buyer's fees, the system will add a dollar amount to every tag that's printed off of the system that your customer will pay to you when they purchase the item and that dollar amount will come off of the amount of the price before it's split with the consigner. So it's a tagging fee or a handling fee that the customer pays that you do not share with your consigner. We have simple buyer's fees, which are these two boxes right here, and we have advanced buyer's fees. Advanced buyer's fees, we could say from one, prices from $1 to $49, give me a $1 buyer's fee. $49.01 up to $100, give me a $2 buyer's fee. $100 to $500, give me a $3 buyer's fee. And everything over $500, give me a $5 buyer's fee. And again, what that's going to do is it's going to add that $1, $2, $3, or $5 onto the price tag of an item when it prints. And that money will come off and be yours before the, the amount that the item is sold for is shared or split with the consigner. That's a little bit about buyer's fees. Um, you probably can't see it there, but when we turn on advanced buyer's fees, it turns off simple buyer's fees. You can only use one or the other. On the right side of the screen, we've got some time period markdowns. You may mark down items by a certain percentage after a certain number of days, and you can either elect to have that print on your printed price tag that uh, hangs on the item, or you don't have to have that schedule print on the uh, tag. Either or, this is where you set them up. The system will automatically mark down your inventory for you. We're going to explore some more of these options in here in depth later on. We'll leave them for now and go back to the store information. And then back to the main menu. And just to recap, what we did is we went into the employee screen. We added an employee. 
We looked at how the sign on and sign off screen can limit access to the system and in some cases even remove buttons from the main menu. And we've gone into the maintain store screen. We poked around and we see how you set up your store with all of the terms and conditions relating to your consignments. That concludes module number three. Uh, we have to limit these modules to about 10 minutes or the YouTube system doesn't like it. We'll continue with module four. We'll take a look at some more options available in the maintain store screen. We'll take a look at what quick returns are used for. And we'll also play with the wish list. Thank you.